Good morning, parents, um, everybody. It is Monday morning, April 6th, and um, I went to bed last night and I had a plan. I had a letter written to all of you, and um, in the wee hours of the morning, I woke up and um, had this brilliant idea. Um, it's been very heavy on my heart um, for everything that you've been going through, having to transition to being at home, having your kiddo at home. Um, and most of us aren't educators and um, it's no easy feat to um, transfer school to home. And um, so at 2.30, I woke up with this brilliant idea, why not send a little video nugget to you with just some things and some background information because it's way too confusing to try to write it and I get a little wordy, you know that. So um, I'm gonna do that. I'm going to just give you a couple basics and um, go forward. So first off, I just wanna tell you that um, in the message today, you're going to see um, a letter from our Gales team. The four of us and Mrs. Jones, we had a conference call that went almost three hours. Um, and we debated back and forth and back and forth what to require the kids to do. And our hang up was that we simply don't have every kid um, it's not equitable. Not every kid has a computer. Not every child has um, the same opportunities. So what we decided to do um, consistently as a team is to give the requirement that's expected um, of the district, which is the packet. That is required. Every kid um, every child, every third grader, fourth grader, fifth grader in Gales has to do the grade level packet and we'll wait and find out how to turn that in. So that's the first thing. Obviously, we know that you um, chose to have your child in our program because um, they needed the enrichment. So here's what we've done. We've said, doesn't matter where you are, what you're doing, packet, yes, you have to do. So the second thing is we worked together and we developed, um, you'll see it. Um, I think it's a pretty um, slick um, set of enrichment opportunities, um, kind of branching across all different genres. The first one is creative writing. Miss Dawson did that. And there's four different writing prompts um, to write a story. Um, it's got a really neat story starter. So there's one per week. So that's something that your child could choose or maybe you choose it for your child. It's not something that we're gonna grade, which um, I think that's actually freeing. The reality is our kids learn whether or not there's a grade tag to it. So um, that's just what we have to do this these times. What I would prefer would be to have all the kids in my classroom, but that's not gonna happen. And um, I don't think it's gonna happen for a while. I think you probably feel the same way. So the first one is an enrichment creative writing opportunity. The second one is a poetry. It's really cool. Mrs. Clark Cup created a poetry choice board and it has many different options. There'll be one per week. She has two finished. Um, the first week, which would be this week, April 6th is week one of April. Um, it's on Shel Silverstein and um, you'll just have to dig in and look at it. It's pretty cool. I did the third one. It was a math board game. So um, your kiddo would take um, a math concept. Um, it says to use Freckle, but our kids are a little bit more familiar with IXL. So that's where I would send our third graders to go to IXL and find some specific standards um, that either we've done or if they want to teach themselves some new things and actually work through creating um, a board game that um, you'll see there's a slideshow that walks them step by step on what to do. So they'll have to copy that slideshow and then they can write in their own things or journal as they go. And uh, Mrs. Greiner, she made the fourth one and it is a passion project, or maybe you might have heard it called a genius hour project. Um, that would be um, 
It's really, really cool. And I wish I could be there to walk you along the way. I'll be here to answer questions, obviously. Um, and maybe I can do more of this where I send some videos out and just give some what to's and how to's because I think this one's really gonna be up their sleeve. Having taught um, gifted for um, all these years, I know kids in the past, Spradlin, you're gonna have an advantage. You've got an older brother that's done a couple passion projects. So um, genius hour projects. So you'll have to look through that. It's where kids, maybe they wanted to learn how to, um, I don't know, publish a book, or maybe they wanted to learn how to, I had a kid once do a project on how to whittle or how to, um, gosh, it's endless. Anything you want to do. Maybe they want to learn how to make a homemade cake and they do some research and they find out, or maybe, um, a child wants to learn how to code and they create a game. Um, so there's, it's endless. Um, it's just basically, finding something that they're passionate about and digging deeper. It's more than just a Google search. Um, so it's gonna take them a whole month. All four of these projects are month long projects. Um, you can pick and choose, you could do none of them. Again, remember this is not required. Um, we do strongly encourage it and I think you do too because Gail's is um, a choice you made. So what we wanted to do is provide opportunities. Um, then in addition to that, I've also specifically, because all four of us are giving the same thing to all of our kids, that's to the whole Gales program. So then in addition to that, I've given other choices, just some things connected to language arts, things connected to math, things connected to social studies and science, different options that they can do. So to me, that's super exciting, but I'm an educator. So what's been troubling me is how, as a parent, that is like, holy cow, how do I adjust being at home all the time, cooking all the time, kids behaving, I, it's just a lot. So um, I, at two in the morning, woke up with some ideas up my sleeve and I thought, okay, so if I had a third grader, my, I mean, my boys were third grade once and we were pretty routine. Um, we had a schedule even in the summer because that's how I operate. Um, so I'm going to share with you just some ideas and I hope this comes out. I, I'll take a picture of it regardless. Um, so I'm going to turn this here so that you can see and we'll see whether or not you can see this. Oh, okay. So the first thing this got smudged, I had to try to find an area. Okay. Here we go. So the first thing um, that I'm, I'm gonna take this off, maybe this will help. Um, I don't know, maybe not. Okay, we'll just do it like this. Mm, I think it would probably be better the way it was. That way it's not all glitchy. Okay, let's do it like that. Okay, the first thing that I would say um, I don't know if you need to see me, but first thing I would say that when I sit down and I think how in the world am I gonna do this? First thing I would do is I would establish a workspace, which is what I have written up here. If you haven't done that already, um, get a workspace, find an area in your house if you can, or it's a mobile workspace. It's something that's gonna have to, uh, maybe you can't just leave it set up all the time, but just have certain things you know will always be there. Their packet, pencils, um, scissors, tape, um, when we get further into their choices, um, having those materials ready. So after you've developed your, your work zone, um, what I would do is I would develop a schedule. Um, and I'm going to show you an example of one. What I want to say, and I don't know if you can see this, is be flexible. Um, what the district is saying is that it should be, kids should be spending about an hour, one to three hours of schoolwork time, okay? That's it, don't overkill. I know our kids like to work harder and do more things, but um, they also, it's the weather hopefully is gonna continue to be nice and we can get outside. So I'm gonna show you an example of one, but I just wanna remind you to just be flexible and make it work with you. Um, we are gonna have beautiful weather. We're gonna have unexpected interruptions. Um, maybe 
you know, we have shift work. Maybe um, things don't work like this. Um, and that's part of the struggle that I'm having is I know when I set things up, not everyone can be there. And it's because we have just different lives. And um, so I just want you to know I'm really trying to make an effort to provide things that you can use that fit for you and make your life as simple as possible in this super chaotic time. So here's an example of a schedule. That nine o'clock nudge just gets the kids up and gets them out of, out of bed. And let everything that I've read is get up, get dressed, um, brush your teeth, get ready for school. So um, that nine o'clock nudge just gives us that 30 minutes each morning um, where we can kind of connect. What I'm gonna probably start doing is assigning kids to say the pledge. We're gonna talk, I'm uh, gonna set up what's expected for the day and um, some challenges and then that's it. But that connection is really important. Thank you all for your feedback. Um, that connection to me, connection to their peers was the number one by far of what every single kid needs. So we'll keep doing that. Um, so let's say you do, so, say at nine o'clock you get up at 9.30. That's what I'm gonna call packet plus time because like I said, the packet is required Plus, we're gonna probably do more. Uh, I hope that um, you would expect your child to, to, do, to do more and to utilize these opportunities. So let's say you sit down that, and at uh, 10.30, it's time for a snack. They've been up since nine o'clock. That's nine to 10.30. That's plenty of time. Get up, get away, walk away, go have a snack and chill a little bit. Then at 11, I have scheduled on Facebook that there will be an enrichment puzzle. Um, I have different things set up for this week, not all from the same book. I've got some Mind Trap Monday, um, Tuesday and Thursday, um, they're thinking puzzles, I can't remember what it is, Wednesday are analogies, and Fridays are plexers. So that's five different things, Get the actually four, because Tuesday and Thursday is the same, but different puzzles. Um, let, the, let their brains get tickled a little bit and have some fun with that. Um, so then, that's kind of a free time right there. That's some lunch, recess, get them outside, get them to play, whatever they might need. Then set back down, try to idle back down in one o'clock. I would call it a packet plus time again. So um, what this does, um, and then around 2.30, get organized, which is what we call that in our classroom. It's our geo time, get organized. So get their space organized again and close it back up and stop so it's ready for tomorrow. Um, that, that's just a, a simple plan. Uh, again, be flexible with this. Maybe the morning works really well, but your afternoon because of transitions in your house, maybe this needs to, sh to transition to the evening. Maybe that only happens if on, I don't know, Wednesday and Thursday. Whatever it is, make it work for you. So um, these are just suggestions. There are a few things that are gonna be consistent with Facebook to just help the survey um, alleviated some stress from me. I see there were some things that really weren't as important to you. So I'm gonna uh, pause those for now and maybe later we'll find that they are important. Um, but these are the two things on Facebook, the enrichment and um, the morning connection that you're gonna see. So after you have your work zone and you've set up a schedule, the next thing that I would suggest doing is establishing a goal or a plan. So like I said, I've given you a whole slew of things to pick from, which I think is exciting, but as a parent, you might think, oh my gosh, I have no idea what to do with that. This is what I would do with my kids. I'd sit down with them and I would say, let's find the things that interest you and let's jot them down on post-it notes. So I have them here. I have like kid blog and creative writing and maybe, maybe they wanna finish IXL. So you get the point. Um, like maybe I wanted to create the math game. Have them jot it all down. Mystery Doug, we've got some really cool Mystery Doug things for science. Um, maybe you want to follow my read aloud every day. That's gonna be posted as well, okay? So you've set all these things up and um, I, I think the passion, pro yeah, the passion project one fell down here, sorry. That was a super close up. It's a little scary. Um, so now you have all of these um, 
and your kids have brainstormed. You have worked together and you've brainstormed all these ideas, right? Now, what do you do? So now you've got to set up a goal. Okay, so now we have it and we have it all worked out. I really, um, mom, I really want to do a passion project. That sounds really cool. Okay, so that's your that's going to be one of your goals. And um, I really want to follow along with Mrs. Signs Read Aloud. All right, that's cool. So we're going to put that one down here. And these are things that I really want to do. The kids are used to this. They're used to setting up goals. I've worked with them in class. Have them prioritize these things, which are the most important. Not Those are good learning opportunities right there. So once they have that set up, this is how you can set up your day. This is what I do in my classroom. If you think back to the pictures, you're going to see the stair step. I'm trying to show you how to do this. The stair step, and this is what the kids know how to do. Okay, they're already trained to do this. So this is where they start. And I don't know if you can see this, it's in green, but it says pack it for the day. And um, this is where I would start. As soon as they're done with this, they move on to the next activity. So the next activity might be that you want them to work in IXL, okay? And you say, okay, set a time limit on there, 20 minutes, IXL. That sounds, that seems reasonable. Ask them what's reasonable. They are used to doing this. These are conversations I have with them in the classroom. Okay, so this is what I would do with them in the morning. Okay, so let's set up our stair step. What are we gonna do first, second, third, fourth? So the next thing is, well, I really wanna work on, I really wanna watch that read aloud, okay? And we're gonna put that as the third thing that you do, okay? So when they finish their packet, they know to work on IXL, then they work on their read aloud. And then um, say, well, you know what? I think you need some writing. I'm gonna throw this one in here for you because I want you to work on that writing prompt. And they'll go, oh, okay. Um, and then finally, then we're gonna work out here on the passion project, okay? I can't, I don't know if you can see that, but there you go. So then what that does is that gives the kids a plan for their day and then they're used to this. This is what I want, I'm trying to communicate to you. They're used to doing this every day in my classroom. So that time up here where you've tucked away packet plus, now they have a plan. They're not, they should not continue to, mom, 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 I need your help. I need you to do this because that's not what they do in the classroom. Don't let them fool you. They don't do that. So um, that's where it brings us to the final thing. After you have this plan, what I want you to do with them, if you haven't done this already, is set up expectations. Okay, I don't know if you can see this and I'm super sorry if you can't. The last thing, the fourth step is expectations. What does packet plus time look like? And what does it sound like? You might have one of the kiddos in the room that um, needs a little bit of music and that's okay. I need music to concentrate. It's okay that it sounds like soft music. What does it look like? It looks like them sitting, maybe not. Some of them like to twirl and dance and stand. That's okay too, but what does it look like? Have that conversation with them. Does it look like them coming in and asking you questions all the time? No, it doesn't, okay? Um, what happens if they do have questions? Let them know what you expect. Let them know that it's okay to come in, and but have your questions ready because my bet is a lot of you are trying to work from home as well. So how can you make this... Um, where they are independent and successful, and so are you. Um, so when you set it up in the sense that you have an hour and I expect you to stay in your work zone and I expect you to stay focused, if you have questions, jot it down on a post-it note, I will get with you at the end of the hour. That's completely fine. They're used to doing that. Remember, they had me divided among 20 kids they can wait for you. So tell them, no, you need to wait. I don't even know if that's a problem. I'm just saying, I know my own kids at home think I should answer things like that. So 
I, I'm just telling you what I'm doing in the classroom and they should be able to handle it at home as well. So, um, so what do they do next? Well, now they have a series of things. Now they have this beautiful stair step. They shouldn't be coming to you say, I'm bored, I don't know what else to do. Because all of these things are gonna take that time and they're gonna take them sitting down, having a plan. Then you have it. And do you notice that we have all of these other sticky notes that are off here to the side? I don't know if you notice that because you can't see them, but all these other things. So what I would do is maybe make your board go even higher, right? Maybe make it so that you have multiple steps and, and, and the kids then can have a plan and you can set it up. What's beautiful is you're gonna be able to go, okay, you had this plan and you had an hour and you're still working on your packet work. It's also gonna help you monitor how they're using their time. If they have an hour, that packet, let's face it, that packet is not going to take our kids that long. Um, that was one of the things we were frustrated with, but that doesn't matter. They need to get the packet done. If it's taking them three hours every day to do the packet, they aren't working, right? You know that. So this holds them accountable. This gives you um, a tool to um, allow them to be independent allow you to have your time and your ability to go do the things you need to do. Um, and it's going to give you an opportunity to celebrate them being successful on their own and a way to hold them accountable So um, and provide feedback. So I know this was longer than I expected, but I hope this helps. Um, I know in my, um, like I said, with my kids, it's what I would do. Um, and um, what I would do if you do decide to print this is print them and organize them by week. Week one, week two, so that'll be easier for the kids to handle and not as overwhelming. And I personally wouldn't let them work ahead in the packet. Let them do the whole week's worth of stuff. If they wanna get all of that week done in one week, that's fine. But don't give them week two until week two because the beauty of what we have done is that they will have the ability to do the other stuff and um, really explore it, dig into it, and um, just grow. Set goals. What do they want done? So I'm going to finish off very quickly. What my plan is, is at the beginning of every week, um, and I've already have it set up for today, is to give a check-in um, where the kids just uh, check in and um, kind of tell me what they plan, what all their little orange post-it notes are for the week. What, what are you planning to do for this week? And then um, walking them through that. And then on Friday, I'm going to have a check-out um, where they articulate back to me what it is they accomplished. And that's gonna allow me the ability to provide the feedback, to stay connected like you were um, wanting from the survey. So um, I just can't tell you how much I appreciate you taking the time to do the survey. It really helps guide me. And I hope this 24 minute video that went way longer, I was hoping to do it in like five minutes, but there was a lot there. I hope it was helpful and please don't hesitate to message me. Um, I will get with you. I think you know that. I'll get with you as quickly as I can. We're in this together. I know we keep hearing that phrase, but we truly are. I'm not sending the kids home and not going to stay connected. I think I've worked more um, since I've been home than I have, and I'm pretty sure you can identify with that. So thank you all for taking the time to listen. And I hope this was helpful and beneficial. Good luck, guys. Bye-bye.